you haven't been here before, you're new to the channel, or if you you're here every week. Hi, my name is Lou. I am the dessert obsessed baker here at Crumbs and Corkscrews. I love dessert. I love baking. I'm a dessert obsessed baker. <laughs> and what we do here is we create the most deliciously easy desserts that anybody can make. So it doesn't matter if you're new to baking, new to the kitchen, sort of a finding your feet sort of amongst the world of food, or if you're out there nailing Star Baker and a Hollywood handshake every week, you will find something here. I'm pretty sure that you're going to enjoy making, and most importantly, you're going to enjoy eating. Um, so if you're joining on Facebook or YouTube, or if you're joining um, sort of on the, what's that thing? Afterwards, on the replay. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with me this evening. I'm really happy. Um, as usual, we just spend a little bit of a moment waiting for people to come in. As you can see on the countdown here, we're starting in about 30 seconds. But also on the countdown, you can see that today we're making a no-bake custard cream cheesecake. My favourite biscuit, my favourite dessert coming together. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And talking of Bake Off, they actually did make custard creams for the technical challenge a couple of weeks ago in Biscuit Week. They absolutely nailed them. So I'm thinking maybe I need to have a go at doing those as well one day. <laughs> but we'll go with the cheesecake and the ready-made custard creams to start with. But as it says, let's get stuck in, let's get started uh, and get baking. Um, so I hope you've got a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, maybe a glass of wine if you're in your evening. Put your feet up and enjoy. Uh, I hope you've not had too bad a day at work. It's been a bit hectic for me, but I'm on fine form this evening after being uh, not too good the last couple of weeks, but we're back on top. Um, so if you're new, what we tend to do is just go quickly through the recipe and the ingredients. Um, if you're watching on replay and you don't want to do with all that, just skip along. We don't mind. But if you're here on the live or if you want to know all them things, stick around for the next couple of minutes and we're going to go through them. So, custard cream cheesecake. I say these biscuits are my favourite. I mean, every time somebody asks me what my favourite biscuit is, I go, mmm, custard cream. Mm, no, chocolate digestive. Mm, bourbon, biscoff, chocolate chip cookie, custard cream, blah, blah, blah. But... Honestly, if somebody put a plate of mixed biscuits in front of me, or, you know, you've got the biscuit tin at Christmas, I'm going to go in for a custard cream every time. I love these. Absolutely love them. So this is why we're going to make a cheesecake out of them. So this cheesecake recipe, as always, I'm going to be making a slightly smaller version because it's just me and Ian, and he can't eat a big full cheesecake all on his own. Um, so I'm going to be making a little version but the ingredients and the amounts that we've got here are going to be for a regular eight inch size cheesecake, which is going to serve actually between 12 and 16 slices. I mean, it depends how big you make your slice. You might want to make big, chunky slices. So eight to 10, 12 to 16, depending on how big you cut it. As I say, this is so easy. I love these cheesecakes, no baked cheesecakes. We've got no faff or water baths or having to put the oven on. And we'll talk about that when we're in the recipe itself. So skill level, really easy. And in fact, it's something that you can probably get the kids to help you with um, as well. The taste of this is a custard cream. It's light, it's vanilla-y, you've got that custard hit coming through and you've got those sweet biscuit flavors because we're gonna be having chunks of these bad boys in there as well. Pros, well, <laughs> it's everybody's favorite biscuit. In fact, I just get my notebook. I tell you, it's almost, I did a little bit of research and we'll talk about custard cream as well, but it was voted the eighth most popular biscuit in the UK. I mean, we know I love them, so I probably dispute that fact quite it's up there at the top. Um, so everybody's favorite biscuit in that smooth, creamy cheesecake all comes together. Oh, I'm so excited. Cons, I mean, with these recipes, as I say every week, the con is, it's making sure you get a slice before everybody else does. The whole point of them being delicious and easy is that there isn't any cons to these recipes, unless you've just got to let it 
sort of chill for a bit. And I, pro I guess we need to let the cheesecake chill. So that's a little bit of a con. But make sure you get a slice before everybody else does, especially if you're serving it for a gathering or party or something like that. So this is our cheesecake. And ingredients wise, ingredients are as simple as the recipe itself. Um, and I'll talk you through these and the equipment. So super, super easy. I'd say they're store covered ingredients if you're buying these sort of things like custard creams. Um, but there's nothing that you're going to not find on the shelves in the supermarket. And you can pair these down. <clears throat> excuse me. You can pair them down with budget friendly alternatives from places like Aldi or Lidl um, rather than uh, named brands. So let's take a look at what we need. Uh, and we're going to start off with 250 grams of our custard cream biscuits. Um, these are going to be for the biscuit base and we're going to have some extra as well for on the top to decorate later. Um, these are here, these are Marks and Spencer's ones. Um, 30p, 30p for a packet of Marks and Spencer's custard cream, um, which I didn't think was too bad. Uh, there's 150 grams in there, so um, two packs, 60p, and then you've got some for your decorating as well, uh, because these are make 300 grams. Um, so that, but again, you can buy the budget alternatives. Uh, so these are our custard creams. We'll talk a bit more about custard cream. Apparently, they sort of originated in about 1908 in the UK. There isn't actually, like a lot of things, foods that have become really popular and a, and a mainstay, there's normally a story or an origin behind them. But as far as I can tell from the good old internet um and also chat gtp if anybody's used ai uh we do for work so i thought I'd give that a try uh nobody knows where they originated from so even the wonder that is a, a generative ai and the the way of the future didn't know um but they have and as we know they have these uh distinct you probably won't see it on the camera but these distinct little pattern on there um the pattern uh is very specific to a custard cream. It's a Baroque pattern. It's from the Victorian era and this represents ferns. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> so, you know, the origins of the custard cream might go a little bit further back, but but we don't, we don't necessarily know what they are. Um, if you're not in the UK, uh, where they are a, a mainstay of the biscuit aisle or the cookie aisle, you might not find them as readily, but things like your closest match, and in my opinion, it's it's not an exact match on flavour, but it's the closest you're going to get is like a golden Oreo, um, and that's sort of uh, sugar cookies with the cream filling, which would work just as well. Uh, so you could substitute those there. But there are custard cream biscuits. You're also going to need for the base a little bit of butter. Um, 75 grams of butter for the for the for the large i remember i've just reduced my quantities a little bit this is salted butter it doesn't matter if it's unsalted or salted for this we're going to melt it and combine it with the biscuits to form our biscuit base um it doesn't need to be at room temperature or softened um because we're going to melt it anyway so you'll need your butter and you can use um, a spread or um, a, a spreadable butter instead. That will melt very quickly. Uh, but do remember, they have a high water content in them. So block butter is typically better. <laughs> um, then on to our filling. So for our filling, um, we've got a couple of ingredients. But our main one, it's a cheesecake, is our cream cheese. Now, this is a full fat cream cheese. If you've, if you've joined a live before when we've been doing a cheesecake or if you've looked at any of the recipes on the blog, you'll know that full fat cream cheese is imperative for your cheesecake. You know, we're not adding any uh, stabilizing agents like a gelatin to this. We're not baking it in the oven. So the, the fat from the cream cheese and the double cream that we're going to whip in and add in is what's going to stabilize and set your cheesecake filling. Can't get my words out today. Um, and 
with a lower fat cream cheese or even you can get the lowest of the low cream cheeses now it's the water content within them and that's what destabilizes your no baked cheesecake filling so we need a full fat cream cheese because it's it still has some water in it uh, but it's not as much um as as the lighter versions when you buy your cream cheese i use um philadelphia but when you buy your cream cheese you can use store own cream cheeses soft cheeses sometimes they call them uh when you peel back the foil you might notice that there's water on the top and just pour that off before you do anything with it because we can get rid of that water really quite quickly but you'll notice on the lower fat version there's a lot more water on the top than there are in the full fat versions in my opinion philadelphia is more expensive but it does have less water content than some of the own store brands if you're in the us or you can find it block cream cheese is even better um because it is literally that it's a block um and it's a lot more stable um so go with full fat cream cheese um I mean, they're delicious, they're easy, they're also calorific, but hey, if you're only having a small slice, it's not so bad. Um, <laughs> but go with a full fat cream cheese and also to go with that then, our full fat heavy double cream. Uh, we, want, um, we want a heavy cream, a double cream, again, for that fat content. A single cream is not going to whip up um, like you, when you whip up a double cream or whipping cream will work as well. Um, but that whipping, that helps stabilize the cream cheese filling and helps set your cheesecake. So you want a double cream or a double cream alternative. Single cream or, or light cream is not going to be, um, I'm going to use the word stabilize again. <laughs> feel a bit like a step record uh but it's not going to work with the cream cheese to get your nice solid filling uh there we're also then so these are our mainstays of our cheesecake filling but we're also going to add a couple of little things in um and john says this sounds amazing thank you <laughs> it is i'm not going to eat it though ian's going to eat it <laughs> um this then is for the rest of the filling. We will add in some icing sugar um, just to make uh, add a little bit of sweetness to the cream cheese and the cream. Uh, we're using icing sugar because it's um, it will just easily disperse with into the filling. We've not got any graining us from a granulated sugar or a caster sugar in there so icing sugar or confectioner sugar or powdered sugar is perfect and what we're also then going to add in as it is a custard cream is uh we are going to add some biscuits in but we're going to add in good old-fashioned custard powder and this is birds uh again another staple british food <laughs> that should always be in everybody's cupboard. I've always got a tin of cu uh, instant custard powder. Um, we're going to use this, uh, and we've got uh, 50 grams of custard powder here that's going in. This is going to bring through that custardy flavor um, into the filling, along with the biscuits. Now, um, again, you can get supermarket own brand versions of these. It doesn't have to be birds custard. Now, when I was doing my research, a lot of people I was seeing were using things called flavor drops, uh, where you can use a custard flavoring. Um, if you fancy doing that, you can add extra custard flavor in that way. For me, I find they, they've come on a lot, but I find they still taste synthetic. So I like to use the ingredients. And in this instance, this is our bird's custard powder. Uh, but if you've got flavor drops, I think foodie flavors might be, um, you can get them on Amazon and in baking stores. You might even be able to get them in the supermarket. I swear I've seen them in Waitrose. But they might be the better versions of that. The thing is, you do need to have quite a lot of drops to make it quite intense. 
Um, so once again, I go with the uh, with the custard powder, and we're not using a ready-made custard. So um, where you can buy a tinned custard, or you can buy birds or ambrosia custard ready-made, because that would be adding more wetness into our um, cheesecake filling, and we want it to the we don't want to upset that stabilization. So that's why we're using good old birds custard powder. Um, and then that's it. Um, what I haven't got on there is uh, some vanilla extract. We'll add a dash of that. And then for the top, we'll use whatever leftover cream. We'll whip up, smother on the top, more calories, <laughs> and the remainder of our custard creams. So like I say, your ingredients are super, super simple. Uh, you can make it gluten-free if you have used gluten-free uh, digestive biscuits. But Custard cream biscuits. We're not using digestives. We're using custard creams. <laughs> okay, for ingredients, what for ingredients? Equipment wise, very simple. Um, we're going to be using a hand mixer and a mini chopper. They're off camera. Um, I have my pot full of my treatments with my spoons and my spatulas. Um, you're also going to need a large mixing bowl but the main bit that you'll need for your cheesecake is a spring form pan so like i say i'm making a small one this is a six inch version which is it's so cute and diddy uh but that is enough for his lordship uh but the recipe is for this one this is an eight inch spring form pan spring form pans are the ones that have this little clamp on the side that you can open and pull your um, outer ring out as far as it will go. It means that when we bake our cheese, I'm not, we're not baking. When we make our cheesecake, we can easily unclamp it, run around the knife, unclamp it, and then give it a jiggle and lift it off. If you think of a flat bottomed, uh, loose tinned uh, cake tin, where you push up from the bottom, you can imagine what that might be like if you're doing a cheesecake and it that pushes and then it leaves a mess and your poor cheesecake looks a bit like it's been dragged through a hedge backwards. I mean, it still tastes as good, but it's not as pretty. So a spring form pan is an absolute must. And they are super cheap. You can pick them up in the supermarket, um, Amazon, bake shops, um, just make sure that it's got the clamp on. And you can get different shapes now. You can get square ones, heart-shaped ones, all sorts. But for me, it's a round one. So you'll need one of these. Uh, that's the 8-inch, but I'm going to be making the 6-inch. So there we go. Let's go and get stuck in then. Um, where are we? I know where I am. <laughs> Oh, there. We're going to start off by making our base. We need to get this in to chill uh, in the fridge for 30 minutes or so while we make the filling. Now, the first thing to do is um, grab your spring form pan and we're going to line it. Now, we're not going to line it like you'd line a cake pan and round the sides, but we're going to put a square of parchment just over the base. And then when we put it together, we're going to clamp it shut. The thing with a spring form pan is, and I'm wondering if you can see this on the camera, is it has this little lip here. Um, so if you're trying to maneuver your cheesecake off to get it onto your serving dish, you don't want to be sort of digging around in there and loosening the base off. So we're just going to put a piece of paper over here, clamp it in, and it means that we can just slide it off and slide our cheesecake off onto our serving platter. Um, just regular baking parchment. This is some that I had left over uh, from the other day uh, from something else. So I'm going to just cut a random bit off. And if you, it's a great way if you've just got odds and ends to use it up, really. Let's get a bit of that over there. So I've got my parchment and I've got my base. As you can see, it fits nicely over. Grab my uh, outer ring. Make sure my clamp is fully open. Put it on the top. There we go. 
It's got a little skirt. Now, if you want to, you can trim this up. I tend to leave it because it just gives me a little bit of maneuver when I'm dealing with my cheesecake. Oh, it just popped out. I didn't quite clamp that enough. Let me try again. Come on. Play nicely. There we go. There we go. So it's so that's that simple if only lining cake pans was that easy all the time uh, so for our um for our base then we're going to be crushing our biscuits up and we're going to be melting our butter now you can melt the butter in the microwave um i'm just going to do it on the hob saves lots of pings and things and the microphone it, the microwave interferes with the internet uh, with the Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to put my butter in a pan and just put it on a low gentle heat whilst it and let it melt whilst we crush the biscuits up. That's the wrong top burner. If you are melting your butter in the microwave, just do it in 30 second blasts. Don't let it go over too much. One, it makes a mess of your microwave as it bubbles up. And two, you don't really, we're not looking for burnt sugar for this recipe. Just going to move a few things the side a little bit let's put the birds up there let's get them out of the way of the camera so for our biscuits then we're just going to be crushing these up using a mini chopper when i find the plug um now you could do this um by hand if you want if you've got kids doing it put the um just put them in a put your biscuits in a freezer bag ziplock bag go on in you go uh and seal it <laughs> obviously because otherwise you'll make a mess uh put your biscuits in your ziploc bag and just give it a bash with a rolling pin break them up bit of fist good fun it's also if you've had a bad day at work super stress relief uh but we're going to be using a mini chopper you could use a uh, a magic mix if you've got a food processor if you want this is just less washing up um so i'm just going to give them a helping hand give them a break up before i put them in and we're going in cream as well, that, that filling, that beautiful custardy scented filling there as well. We're not scraping that out. And actually, when I was doing my fact-finding mission about custard creams, the center is made with custard powder. There we are. Right. I'm just going to blitz these until they're a fine sandy texture. And I've got this round the wrong way. I'm going to need my biscuits. So my work surface is clear. I'm just going to pop them on there for the moment. Um, but here we go. This is our crumb. There we go. And it's it's like fine sand. Um we don't want any lumps in there. If you've got lumps of biscuit, what happens when it sets and then you go to slice it and your knife hits a big chunk of biscuit, um, although, you know, winner, winner, chicken dinner, but um, when you hit that, the pressure as you go on the chilled base with that lump of biscuit causes sort of it to fracture across the base and then the rest of your base um just collapses and falls apart. So make sure you get these to a real fine uh, texture. And we'll have a look in a second. What did I say? This is plate long. See, this is, I can hear my butter bubbling. I've got a lump of biscuit there, which I don't want. So I'm just going to... There we are. I'm just going to... Butter is melted. Uh, let's add the rest of these. So, yeah, if you've got any lumps, just pop it back in, give it another whiz up, and you're good to go. Oh, I can smell cut the creams, and it smells amazing. Uh, let's just... So this is it. We've got this sandy texture. Ooh. I'm just checking through with my spoon, make sure there's no lumps. 
So make a well in the centre. Separate note, lump. And then with your butter, just pour your melted butter straight in. You can get rid of that. And then just stir it all together. Now we're not looking for a really soggy sand. So, you know, I talked to it about it was a sandy texture. You know, when you're on a beach and you're making a sand castle. I don't actually remember the last time I was on a beach making sand castle. But when you're doing that, you don't want really wet sand, do you? You want sand that's damp, that holds itself together. Uh, it's not too dry and it's not too wet. That's the same sort of texture that we're looking for here. Uh, you can tell I haven't had a summer holiday. I'm dreaming about beaches and sand and sandy textures. <laughs> um. So this all brings together the warm butter as well. I can smell that filling, that custard filling from the custard cream. It smells amazing. Um, there we go. Oh, I have. There, ah, we don't want you in there. A lump of biscuit. Let's get rid of that. And that's your base now. We're just going to pop this in the pan that we've lined. Oh, I've got another one. They do sneak in. I'm going to eat that one. <laughs> I haven't had any dinner yet. So now we've got our base. Oh, my trousers are falling down. <laughs> We're just going to pour our biscuits into the bottom of our lined spring form pan. Now, Can we deal with it? Uh, this 30 minute timer. I don't understand it. Um, now, what I've got is you can have this as a really thick base if you want. And I've just picked up a measuring cup whilst I was the other side of the camera. I want to actually bring this up the sides a little. So there's a little bit of a, not all the way up, but there's like a little bit of a lip. Um, oh, I was looking, I was looking at how I might decorate earlier and I was like, oh, I quite like that, rather than it just being perfectly flat for a change. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going round with my measuring cup. You can do this with a spoon or a, a, a mug. I might actually use the dish I had the butter in in a minute just to press in. When you do this, you want it to be really compacted. Again, a bit like we were saying about having lumps in there with it fracturing. If it's not compacted enough, when you do then cut into it, the butter's not holding it together and it will just crumble away. Um, so this is fine. So we're just going to compact it down. And what I'm doing with this is I'm just pushing up the sides. It does. I'm not going for pretty today. I'm going for as much up the sides as I can get while still having a good face. And the rustic look. Make sure when you're doing this as well that you still leave enough filling in the bottom. We don't want to have any holes in the bottom there. I'm just going to pop that there. Where's my spoon gone? I'm just going to actually run round the edge like that. This. I am a terrible, I'm not a perfectionist, but, you know, I like it to look pretty-ish. Let's just make sure that's all there. There we go. Loose bits, couple of loose bits. But when, what we're doing, gonna do now is set this in the fridge. This all, the butter will set, hold it all together and we'll be good to go. So, yeah. Mm. My favorite bit, the base. In fact, when I eat cheesecake, I eat the filling and then keep the base for after. It's a bit like when I do a crumble and I eat, keep the crumble for last. As you can see, that's all in there. It's compacted in. I'm going to pop this in the fridge. 
Ideally, we'll pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Depends how long it's going to take me to make the filling today. Um, it's probably not going to be that long. Um, but we're going to pop that in. If you can leave it for 30 minutes, that's better. But don't worry if you can't. So in that goes. I mean, how? It's easy. You know, we've crushed some biscuits and melted some butter. <laughs> I can still smell these. Hey, should we give you another fun fact from my facts about um, custard creams? You'll get bored of these. Uh, so um, not only is it like up there with uh, the most popular favorite biscuit, uh, nine out of 10 people said it was their favorite biscuit. Um, it's also, and I can test this one because I wouldn't do this because I don't think it's one of these types of biscuits. It's up there in like the top five biscuits to dunk. I am not dunking a custard cream in my tea. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Doesn't feel right to me to dunk a custard cream. My digestives, dark chocolate digestive, chocolate hobnob, yes. Custard cream, no. <laughs> So for this next bit, we're going to be making i uh, I'm a dunker. Oh, I am definitely a dunker, but I'm not sure I'm a dunker of a custard cream. <laughs> John. I need to send your message as well. His lordship said to me, dunking them is delicious. Claire, John, you two are right. I'm, I'm after this, I'm going to save one and I'm going to dunk a custard cream. I'm not sure. Oh, this is an unpopular opinion, isn't it? One of them things they put on Instagram. <laughs> right, you've convinced me. I'm going to dunk a custard cream. Good girl. This is why I love doing the lives. You're all just ripped them out of me. <laughs> I will try it. I'll try it and I'll post it on my stories tomorrow. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling really uneasy about dunking a custard cream. Anyway, let's make, let's make a cheesecake filling. As we know, we've got several very basic ingredients, our full fat cream cheese, our double cream, our um, custard powder and our icing sugar. Now, we talked about our cream cheese being full fat, perfect. The other thing you need to do and it's just, this came out of the fridge when I started the video. So it's been sat here for a little bit for about half an hour. But this cream cheese needs to be room temperature. It doesn't want to be straight from the fridge. When it's straight from the fridge, it's still, the fats are still solid. Like all those bits and the cheese in there. Um, and, and I'm going to look at that comment about dunking a biscuit in a minute when we've talked about the like, fridge cheese. You want your cream cheese to come up to room temperature. It doesn't have to be warm or anything, but just take it out of the fridge. I'm going to have to get a drink. Take it out of the fridge about 10, 15 minutes. Or if you're talking to the internet and making a biscuit base, that amount of time. <laughs> but take it out of the fridge about 10, 15 minutes. Let it warm up a little bit. Let the... Let it relax, you know, let it other way around, chill. We don't want it chilled, we want it relaxed. Um, and when you whip it up, it'll be a lot lighter, a lot smoother. And any lumps, now you don't normally get lumps with cream cheese, but when you break it down and you start whisking it, you can get lumps, but you're going to sort of get rid of any risk of those. So let this relax at room temperature for about 10, 15 minutes to go. So John says, oh, no, you dunk them and the biscuit melts away and you're left with this. Oh, my. OK, I'm doing it tomorrow. I've got another two packets of custard grapes <laughs> on top of these two. So I've got plenty to practice with. And I'll give you I'll let you know how I get on tomorrow. <laughs> So we've got our room temperature cream cheese full fat. Uh, in it goes. Now, you might see, a, we're talking about water content. You might see a little bit of water here. Don't panic. It's nothing to worry about. It's just that relaxing, but it's just a little bit wet. Um, 
I have seen people go turn it out onto some kitchen towel and pat it round and get rid of it. And you, you can do one. I find it's incredibly messy. Um, and two, it doesn't really do that much. If you bring it out at room temperature, you give it a good whisk and you treat your ingredients all with the care and attention that they deserve. It works perfectly fine. So we've put our cream cheese in here and we're just going to spread it. See, as you can see, it's just spreadable, nicely spreading. And then we're going to add in, to start with, our icing sugar. Add it straight in. Um, now, Mr. Routley, sugar, diabetes, all of that sort of stuff. If you're okay with the biscuits, then good. Don't add the icing sugar in. You could use an artificial sweetener like the powdered uh, artificial sweeteners. It's going to give you a little bit of a taste. But I only add the icing sugar in just to lift the sweetness uh, from the cheese a little bit. I mean, it's not cheesy cheese, uh, but you can just um, leave that out if you want to. Uh, my mum does. My mum makes the cheesecake uh, and she makes it against all my... Um, advised with low fat cream cheese uh she somehow manages to get it to work i haven't they just sort of melt away but she doesn't add the sugar in either uh sometimes she'll add the sweetener in uh so that is an alternative if you're okay with the biscuits um because that's our only purposely added sugar into this so i've just folded my icing sugar in with my spatula and I haven't done this with the whisk because what I don't want to do um is overbeat my cream cheese because like when you're making a cream cheese frosting if you overbeat it you slacken it off um and that's the water content in it and if it's slack again it's when you whip the cream and you add it in that's not all going to work together and it's just going to droop and we don't want it drooping we want a nice smooth solid cream cheese filling <laughs> So that's the icing uh, sugar in there. I'm just going to scrape that off. And then we're going to add our custard powder in. Remember, we're using custard powder rather than um, custard itself or um, custard drops. And this also is going to give you that custardy custard color. You know, if you if you make custard with good old birds or any of the custard powder and it goes yellow, I love that color. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it with the light, but it's got just a tinge of custard yellow. So I've just folded that in. Again, I haven't over whipped it or beaten it or done anything with it because when I whisk it with the hand mixer, I'm going to do that with the uh, cream in there. So I've got a pile of washing up. <laughs> Bring on that. So last two ingredients, our double cream and our vanilla extract. So put that in there. Remember, it's double heavy, full fat cream. Uh, you can use whipping cream as well because that's nice and stable. Remember, um, don't go for a single cream or a light version. Um, I haven't tried any of the, the lactose-free, dairy-free alternatives, so I can't contest to what they're like uh, for whipping, but I know you can get double cream versions of those. I'm just going to add in a spot of vanilla extract, teaspoon, uh, which is my capful here. Let's pop that there. Wipe my hands. And then oop, I'm just going to pop this on and whisk it up. Yeah. Sorry if that's coming through the mic. And all we're doing here is as it whisks up, the, the cream is doing its thing when it whisks. And the cream cheese is emulsifying in with it there. Gonna... Mm. 
How quick? <laughs> Noisy, but how quick is that? You can do this um, with a stand mixer if you want to, but it's a bowl and a ham, and that's it. So lugging that thing out from the corner is it's not worth it. <laughs> but as we've whipped that, the cream has whipped together with the cream cheese. So we've got this nice, thick consistency. Give it a whisk through, a mix through with your spatula. Best thing about a glass bowl, you can see if there's any sort of wetness at the bottom. Uh, but then just, that's it, this is it. Um, I was going to put some biscuits through it, but I'm not going to. You can, if you want to, add, um, you could save some of the crumbs when we uh, crush the biscuits for the base and put that through in here. Uh, you could put some biscuit chunks in here. I've got that nice side on my on my base that I did, so I'm not going to add anything else to it. Let's just move those out of the way. Hmm. Yes, we like that. <laughs> Move them out of the way before I just sit here and eat the rest of the filling. So we're now ready to put this into our chilled um, base. So ideally, like I say, you'd have left that for about 30 minutes in the fridge. I've left it for about 15. It has started to set and uh, sort itself out so that's fine um it's not wet it's not warm still as we add this to it so because i've got those sides i'm going to be doing this two ways i'm gonna scoop up and in that's my spoon gone you can't, I don't know if you can see it, it's got this little tinge of yellow to it. If you want a real yellow cheesecake, you could add a little bit of uh, yellow gel food colouring to it. Oh, thanks. Uh, because I've got that edge and I want to do this two ways, um, have it like uh, edge halfway up and then the rest is filling. Uh, so it looks like it's half and half. Um, I, uh, I've just put this in to fill the middle bit and then I'm just smoothing it over with a spoon making sure it's i'm not pushing down on, on into it but i'm just manipulating the filling so i know that it's in that that hole that the, we've left there in the base um and give it a smooth round don't have to worry about it being tidy it's fine and then with the rest of this now i'm just going to finish this off He's out mountain biking tonight and he'll come back and he'll go, what you got for me? Now, I I also know I owe you guys uh, apple crumble tray bait recipe. I finished taking the pictures finally um, and I've written that up. So that will be going live tomorrow. And also the uh, Black Forest Cupcakes. And also, if you saw at the weekend, I'd been playing with uh, making homemade Oreos um and making them as pumpkins for halloween um i know we're we're close to to halloween next week and it's the weekend um i don't know if i'm going to be able to get them photographed but what i will do with you guys is i will share the recipe on the facebook page uh just with maybe a, a, in in the comments uh and then so you've got it for halloween and then we'll get that ready to to go onto the blog um I tried a few different ways with those, um, and it was because we were using a pumpkin cutter, uh, cookie cutter, and making sure we didn't lose his face and mouth and eyes from the pumpkin and its shape when we uh, when I baked. So I tried a couple of different ways. Uh, but, yeah, great homemade Oreos. Uh, and they are as easy as, as making these. In fact, easier. Um, there's no egg in it. Uh, which is great as well. So as you saw, I put the rest of the cream cheese, uh, cream cheese, the cheesecake filling into my um, 
pan and I've moving off as we go. I've got a little bit left in there. Make sure, like I say, you, you're not pushing down on your filling to make sure the filling is compacted like we did with the base, but you're just making sure it's in all the nooks and crannies um, of the of the base there and uh, it's all ready to go because otherwise when you open it out, it's just a, a hole. Um, so that's that. Uh, and then I'm going to use, uh, put my finger in something, some filling. Just going to use this. Um, let's see it. <laughs> my trusty angle spatula, as always. Um, I love these things. You guys know I do. I use them all the time. Um, and it's just going to help me get that final smooth top to my cheesecake. Now, it means I haven't got to get my hand in or drag my hand through anywhere. And I'm just turning. I'm just going to. Mm -hmm. All custard cream cheese. <laughs> so this now is all level and set. This is going in the fridge now. It's going to go in the fridge for four to six hours. Now, it might be chilled before that, but you don't. And people have messed me. Oh. I took it out at three hours and it just sort of, it cut and then it just, um, we need to let time for that cheese to, and that cream to chill and then do its work again. We've manipulated it effectively. We've whisked it. We've beaten it with an electric hand whisk. We've done things with a spatula and this, that, and the other. And it's all sat there going, ah, just let me chill. So put it in the fridge for four to six hours. I say four to six because, you know, you do want to get stuck into it. If you can leave it for six, even better. If you can leave it overnight, it's even better. It allows everything to chill, to, to stabilize. It's not going to harden up, but it just sets and it sets firm. So pop this in the fridge, four to six hours overnight if you can when you then come to take it out just run a knife that you've uh put under the hot tap not boiling water or anything like that just run it under the hot tap whilst you're filling the sink dry it and then just run it around the edge of your cheesecake inside the pan before you unclamp it and that means it just releases a little bit from the sides of this spring form and then when you unclamp it it will just come away and then you get nice smooth edges. Um, if you don't do that, it doesn't matter. You just might take some of your, your filling with you <laughs> when you take the clamp off. What I was going to do, what I, terrible English. What I'm then going to do is with the leftover cream that I've got and some of these custard creams, I'm going to make a, a big cloud of double cream on the top because, you know, more dairy. <laughs> More calories and then uh stud it with some custard creams and some crumbly bits all over the top and serve it like that um but effectively you don't have to do that you can just eat it like that that's your custard cream cheesecake let's put it in the fridge and whilst we're here i just press the button for mr cannon and that's it i mean that is our cheesecake simple we did the biscuit base we made the filling and now it's in the fridge and the fridge does all the work. We haven't even got to turn the oven on. Yes. Bonus all round. <laughs> um, so that will set now and tomorrow I will get it out. I always leave mine overnight um, and I'll finish it off and I'll do all the photos and all the bits and pieces. Um, but it's a great recipe. Um, I'm going to do all the usual bits and pieces. The beauty of the no-bake cheesecake is if once you've got that base and filling nailed, you can mix it up. You can do whatever you want with it. The com the 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 ratio of the cream and the cheese, the soft cheese, the cream cheese, should always stay the same because that's what gives that stability. 
if you start cutting down on the cream cheese um, and switching over, you never even say, I'm going to try this weekend. I need to send you some dates before I forget. I will send you after this. I got told off for not sending you some dates. Um, <laughs> it's been a bit busy. Um, but you can, once you've got those ratios and the cream cheese and the uh, the cheese, um, the double cream together, perfect, Miss Rowley. Um, once that comes together and you just see it coming together, when you do it for the first time, you'll feel it. If it's too slack, you'll feel it. Um, but making sure you get those ratios together, it just comes together really nice and smoothly. You can then add extra things in. So on the website, there's loads of different ones. But like the double, there's a triple chocolate cheesecake with different layers of chocolate in. You can add melted chocolate, but you have to remember that you're adding another liquid to it. So you add it in smaller quantities, um, but it still hits the mark. If you're doing anything where you're adding chocolate, always make sure it's cooled before you add it into the mixture because you'll shock the cream and the cheese with the heat from the chocolate. So you allow it to cool down. You can add um, jam in it. You can add in, oh, what have we got? Oreos, crushed Oreos in there, all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, you can just go very plain and simple with vanilla, have some fruit on top. I've actually got some black forest fruits in the freezer. I'm thinking, mm, that might be good. Uh, you can swap those biscuits, you know, Dark chocolate digestives work perfectly. Oreos work perfectly as well. But you can change the biscuits around. You can change the fillings around. Have a go with it. You don't have to do custard creams, but you can have a play with those different sort of um, textures and flavors. Like I say, I was going to put biscuits, that more custard creams into mine, but because I built my sides up, I decided not to because I got the biscuit there instead. But put some, don't put them whole in because they're just too big, but break them up into chunks. Uh, you can, like I say, you can use some of the crumb mixture. Put that through there. Um, chunks of Kit Kat, Maltesers. Check out the Malteser one on the website. It's had so many hits. It's just one of my favorites. And then I get a different favorite and a different favorite. <laughs> but it's really simple. Um, so this size, which is the 8-inch, will serve... 12 to 16, depends how big you cut it. I mean, it could just serve four if you go straight down and straight across. <laughs> um, but that's the size that you've got those um, uh, ingredients on the, the video for, and as all, all the wet recipes on the website are for an eight inch size. Um, you can see how easy it is, it's super easy. It tastes amazing. Um, there's a little bit I might scrape the bowl before I make mine. <laughs> and cons, okay, he's getting a slice and having to wait for it to chill. That's the worst bit. Um, ingredients wise, then I won't go back through all of these, but they are easy. Whatever you're creating for your base, your biscuit base, we've used custard creams with a little bit of butter. Don't scrimp on the butter there because the butter's what holds it all together. Remember what I said about that sandy texture. Uh, you've got the cream cheese and the double cream there, the custard powder, the icing sugar, if you want to add it, powdered sugar. Don't substitute with a granulated sugar because it will not absorb itself into the filling. You'll get that grainy texture. And then whatever you want to decorate. Um, like I say, for equipment, your spring form pan, a little bit of baking parchment, and or a stand mixer, however you want to do it. I mean, you could even... The right is right at the bottom, but we have for absolute emergencies a balloon whisk, an old style balloon whisk. That would even work if you wanted to do it with a <laughs> um and put all the greatest back now. Um but you yeah. Hand mixer, stand mixer, something to mix it all together, large mixing bowl to mix everything in. And then all your accoutrements, your spatulas, your palette knife. You don't necessarily need them. You can do it all with a spoon. Um, I've got a piping bag on there. I don't know why I've got a piping bag. Maybe for, I was thinking I might pipe the cream. I'm just going to slather it on. <laughs> and a mini chopper for crushing your biscuits. But, again, you can do that by hand with 
a rolling pin and a Ziploc bag and a little bit of aggression if you found, if you had a bad day at work. But that's it. I mean, how easy is it? Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to take pictures and share that with you once it's all finished and chilled. Um, but you will be able to find, I'm going to get it right, the full recipe at the website once it's done. But if you go on there, across the top, there's desserts, the recipe box, and it's all there. Cheesecakes tend to be quite prominent on the website. All my cheesecakes are in there. You've got Maltesers, you've got Mint Aero, Chocolate Orange, Crunchy One. That's really good. Um, jammy Dodger, triple chocolate. Um, what else have we got? Bailey's, um, Black Forest, going back on the Black Forest. There's loads in there. If you look at them, you might find one that you want to do, but they're all along the similar lines of this one that we've just done this evening. So you'll be able to see how easy it is to uh, flex with those. Oh, thanks, Barbara. Thank you for me. I haven't replied to your message either. And I'm, I'm apologizing to everybody this evening. <laughs> I will reply to you, but I hope you're well as well. Um, like I said, you'll find everything on the website and all my top tips are in all of my um, posts as well. So you'll find my tips for success and all the frequently asked questions. And there's lots more in there about why we're using full fat cream, and full fat cream cheese and and the chilling process and how it all works if you're interested in the science of the of the cheesecake but thank you very much for joining me here on my i don't even know what it's like now because it's dark outside here in the Cotswolds. but thank you very much for joining me this evening it's been an absolute pleasure thanks for your chat john claire i'm gonna try dunking although it's against my better judgment I'm going to try dunking a custard cream tomorrow. I'll try it in my tea and then I'll try it in my coffee. I think it's going to be better in the coffee, but we'll try it out. Next week, we are going to be doing these on a Wednesday evening. It's just, we've got quite a bit on um, and things are happening. So Wednesday evenings are great. Ian's off mountain biking. I'm sat home alone, so I thought I'd share my Wednesday with you guys. Uh, but next week, we're going to be making, I haven't made brownies for ages. Sorry, guys. We're going to do a brownie. We're going to do a mint chocolate brownie, and that's going to be a brownie base, a layer of mint mm, frosting or filling, and then we'll do a chocolate ganache on the top, so it's a bit layered. Um, I might change my mind before then, um, but... We'll see. I might uh, put the vote out to you guys. Thanks, John. I will give my best, Ian. I will message you this evening once I've made my dinner. Um, and I shall speak to you all soon. Have a great rest of the weekend and enjoy the weekend when it gets here. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.